All right, so looking at CabelcoEurope.com and their excavator colors, look at this. From across the pond from where I am, normally Cabelco North America is uh, like an orange or yellow color, but I love this coral blue that they go with. And I know I'm going to have a whole bunch of people disappointed and saying that I ruined my excavator, but I am going with, instead of Kumatsu, a Cobelco color in des uh, design instead. Look at this, guys. I have been painting this all week in these two colors right here. TS-41, which is coral blue, and TS-42, which is light gun metal. Look at the beautiful color. I have a ton of uh, construction equipment, all yellow. I was going to do like a red and white or a red and black, but I decided the Cabelco was something so unique. I don't have anything like this here. I used a UPOL, UPOL acid etch number eight to eat into the alloy. It's a primer. Thankfully, it's a non sanding uh, primer and a ton of great adhesion. All of these are for the cab. The tracks I did in a trim clad. These you can see in between I didn't do, so as it rolls you'll see some of that coming through, but it's not a big deal. I decided to do a trim clad with that same acid etch primer just for durability. And yes, we'll have wear marks on here, but for longevity and that color of Cabelco, it looks good. Now here's something else I was considering. Somebody else asked me to do a steampunk type of excavator. And I gotta say, these, um, these uh, rams themselves, they are beautifully done. And I think for now, I'm actually going to leave these just raw. I think along with this whole excavator, and I know a ton of people in my build videos always give me heck all the time because they don't see my vision when I first start a project, um, but I'm excited about this one. I think the rams, everything's going to come together and look absolutely spectacular. Look at this job. Look at that. No runs, no nothing at all. Took me a few days just to put on really light coats all the way around. Yeah, looks good, hey? Here's something else you guys might think is really cool. Here is a actual radiator with a fan mount to cool the hydraulic oil that's going through the lines. That's a pretty neat functional scale accessory. Here is the back weight, which was painted black, but now light gunmetal gray, and I have ordered the Cabelco stickers custom to be done, so I'm excited to see those. And I figure we might as well start up the build. Look at everything is individually wrapped. Every item is wrapped. Insane. So I love how they checked everything off in the instruction book. Let's get to work. Now the first things I'm going to need are these two track drives. Look at this, an inline motor and gearbox and transmission set up to the out drive. Same with this fella right here. We're going to need these two pieces. And then the drive cog, look at this individually done right here. Just beautiful from Lesu. Wow. Okay. And then two, we need four of these brackets and two of those and some screws. No problem. Look at all these bags of little screws. <laughs> oh, I've got my work cut out for me. Okay, I just realized that there are no letters on any of these bags and you kind of have to figure out what you're looking for simply by using your eyes. Now that's not a big deal. Here are some footsteps, literally footsteps that are going to be going onto uh, these track drives. And then I needed these little pieces right here, these two pieces on the bottom. All right, the sprocket, as you can see, once I have it undone here, is beautiful. These teeth are cut nice and sharp. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on, lay this on its side right here. All these holes are going to line up, okay? Doesn't matter if you put it like front or top like this. There is no side that I can tell that really matters in the book. Line it up 
And then what I'm going to do is use these little 2x6 screws and thread all of them in. And yes, I am going to Loctite every single one uh, just so it uh, doesn't come undone as it's being used. And just like anything, any tire, I'm going to do it in a star pattern. So I'll start here and then I'll go to the opposite end and then I'll go to one corner and then completely the opposite side. I know, I said corner. There's no corner in a circle. <laughs> you know what I mean though, a star pattern. And you can see there the bolts are thread locked in on that back sprocket and there is 30 per sprocket. The other thing I'm going to do here is this back cover we discussed in the first uh, unboxing video. I'm actually going to open this up and show you what's inside. And there it is. It is a chain drive off of the motor and transmission. Look at that. So what I'm going to do is just add some more grease in here and in, uh, in behind the chain as well so it can get in where that bearing is. Make sure everything is protected against any kind of moisture. Yeah, that's much better. It's a nice torquey motor too. Okay, then we take a couple of these M3 screws and put this back area on. This is going to basically be a, I don't know the technical term because I don't work in heavy duty construction, but it'll basically be the roller carrier for the idle wheel there. Going to Loctite these or thread lock. You'll notice that I'm using a red Loctite. I know many of you are fearful of red Loctite. Um, I'm using a gel base as well. It doesn't bother me. I don't really have a whole lot of trouble removing and because it's metal on metal you can always heat up the part briefly to melt that thread lock. I'd rather make sure it was locked on site when all the work was being done than having it fall apart if you know what I'm saying. Now comes the fun part. Here is a heavy piece of brass which is pretty much the color of gold. So many people were saying I should paint the, uh, the excavator gold colored. Uh, because of YouTube gold. I totally agree, uh, but of course chrome and gold, they are kind of tough to film because they're very reflective, but look at this piece. That's why I didn't want to paint any of this stuff. We just leave it the brass color because the gold does look pretty cool. So we need this one. Uh, we need the roller, which is kind of up here, if you guys can see way up there. Here is the idler wheel, All right? So take this out. This is just beautiful, guys. Look at that. Like the quality is definitely there. So I'm going to add a little bit of grease to the middle on both sides and then add a bearing. You can see here, here is two bearings, like one on either side. Nothing like getting your fingers greasy while you're fingering a little hole. That doesn't sound right at all. There we go. Not too much because it's going to attack, uh, attract dirt and you don't want dirt to get around the race of the bearing there, which is the outside wall. Okay, now here are these two little brass collars, as you can see, and these collars have a hole that go straight through from side to side. Those are important because in the hanger for the idler wheel, we'll see that two grub screws actually get fit on the inside. Now, a word to the wise, if you have a little bit of grease nearby, Put some onto a collar if you're ever going to be sliding it into an area where you need it to stay. One on either side, now the grease kind of acts as a little bit of an adhesive. Okay, so those collars are in place. Take the idler wheel, slide it. Look at, there's very low room for error here. The play is non-existent. So, just going to and once you're done cursing and swearing and getting it into place, you'll notice that this pin right here with has two holes in it. There is a theme to what's going on here. I'm going to slide this straight through the idler wheel. Straight through the idler wheel. Maybe with a slight tap. <laughs> there we go. Son of a gun. And then I'm taking these M3 12 mil grub screws, set screws, whatever you want to call them, and threading them through all the way through the pin and through the end. I'm only going to Loctite the very end of these set screws right so they're flush. Okay, and while I have your attention, let's go into this area right there. 
There is a bracket that needs to be screwed in there and it's not to protect these wires. Now if we see right here, this is a long threaded rod. But on the end of this rod, it actually has a flat spot. I'll take it out so you can see. There it is. So it's flat to the point where it still can be threaded, but you'll see it's got some bite on either side. What do I mean by that? Well, let's bring it in. Where's the screw or the spring? Here's the blue spring that's going to be for uh, track tensioning and for allowing rocks to go through. So it gives it a little bit of uh, impact resistance there in the track. I'm going to take that section and I'm just going to thread it in the end. And you'll notice on top there's another area for a set screw as well as on the bottom. I'm going to make this nice and flush with the inside and then I'm going to not use any thread lock and put two small grub screws in on either side. Then once the set screws are in, I take the spring, I put it over like this. Now you can kind of see what's going on. This is going to slide into the channel. Right, tongue and groove kind of idea. Slide through to the center piece where I just put in the bracket and underneath. Then I'm going to use a washer, or pardon me, a nut, and I'm going to thread it on. Just like that. Now I'm sure that could use some thread lock, but I'm not going to put anything on that until I know a little bit more about this whole setup. But there, now you can see the track, if it had any issue, like a rock going through, it would be able to push out of the way. And of course, the last step for this part, put those two little step plates on, which are aluminum. I just painted them off camera a little while ago, so now they're dry. Let's work on the top piece right here. Okay, there, these pieces, we'll cut these ones out. I also need the rollers and probably some bearings, I would think. Now this is a little bit of a funny part in the build where I'm creating a piece now, but we don't get to use it until later. Let's get these rollers out. Look at these rollers, guys. These are aluminum on either side, perfectly rounded out. Incredible. Everything has been fitting together, uh, no problem at all. Everything has been aligning properly. And this is such a different uh, type of excavator, like it'll look the same, but being able to put it together uh, compared to the ready to run one that I have already, like this is, I certainly understand this much, much more. Let's get these pins out. These are the pins that are gonna go through the rollers. The roller actually gets, let me see, where are those bearings? I got two of them here. Well, I can just use those for now. Two on either side. So what I wanna do is I wanna grease the inside of this roller right? So some there, some on the other side, not too much because I don't want to get the bearing, uh, you know, full of grit and whatever, but I want to make sure that it's a good fit, has some resistance against humidity. And then I'm going to stick this pin right through the roller. Out is going to pop some of that grease, which I can use in the next one. And then I can drop it right into this plate. Now, if you are building along and you have a hard time dropping that into the plate, just make sure your bearings are squeezed in on either side. What we want to do is do seven of these per side, so 14 total, 14 screws on one side, so 28. Uh, and so you are going to be sitting there for a little while getting it done. So now you understand how to do it, I'm going to get to work. And there it is all completed, the brackets and every screw installed, the rollers look beautiful. They're like butter when I roll across them, no problems at all. 14 screws on one side, 28 screws per track. Look at this, and of course off camera, I did the second one because you know why? I always do a second one. I always do one first before I even attempt to give you guys a tutorial so I know exactly what's going on. Look at that, imagine that on YouTube. Someone that knew what they were doing before a tutorial happened. <gasps> <laughs>
Now let me get this piece here. This is pre-done and pre-wired, even though the instruction manual shows that you have to do this, it's pre-done already. Look at this, this are, these are gonna be the plugins for each motor on either side. And of course, this is gonna be the centerpiece that allows the whole top section to rotate left and right, 360 degrees. Now let's have a look, Ugh, listen to this, listen. That's what I'm talking about. And this huge gear right here. This gear is the next part I need in the build. I take the gear and I slide it through and I line up all the holes. Now, <laughs> how many screws do I have to do in one episode? That's what she said, come on. Not meant for just kids here. Okay, so I'm gonna have to put a ton through here and they all take uh, nuts on the back. So that's gonna take a little bit of while. Yes, a little bit of while. And after 35 minutes, and very sore fingers after. I can tell you that there are 32 screws and 32 nuts to, to be done here. And I just realized I put the gear on the wrong side. I'm just kidding. Ha ha! I gotcha! Man, that would suck. And then, then I'm gonna grab these little pieces. Look at that, like kind of an L bracket. And I'll just put them on this side. That's good. Okay, this big son of a gun has holes in the side near the top. Hole there and then hole on the other side where the wires for the motors are gonna go through. So it's gonna be very simple. These go through the middle. Like that. Ta-da! And then I'm gonna thread the motor wires through. I pull them straight through like that on one side and then of course the other. There we go. Then you can see it is like that and I'm gonna put a plate right over the top. Now you guessed it, a whole bunch more screwing. <laughs> and then don't worry, just a few more screws after that. You need to have a bottom protective plate of course. Then we take these beautiful pieces, bring them back beside. Now, which way are these gonna go? Good question, I'm still figuring that out myself. Okay, and then I'm lining it up, getting those wires connected to the brushed motors, putting them back down inside. I'm gonna do that on both sides. And of course, to you guys, the film has gone by so fast and it's actually taken me the better part of the day to get all of this done. Uh, only because there's, you know, when you're filming, for me it takes much longer to build a machine when I'm filming because I'm taking considerations of camera angles. But at the same time, there is a lot of hand turning of the screwdriver here. So if you are gonna get into a build like this, be prepared, you're gonna be uh, working at it for a little while. And there are two screws, one on either side to make sure that is nice and secure. What do you think, guys? Make some noise in the comment section. Smash that like button right now because this is an incredible build. Okay, flipped it back over. Now I get to install the rollers. Let's see here. This one is more than likely going like that. And the other one will be doing the same like that. How many more screws? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve per side. Twenty-four more screws. Yeah, I gotta say, everything about this model has fit together perfect. All the holes have lined up well. None of my screw heads have stripped out yet. I'm pretty impressed by that. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this actually move eventually, even though I just started building it, like this morning. <laughs> And these little pretty pieces go on here. There's four, one, two, three, four. All right, and then I'll just flip it over here. I can lay out the tracks that were painted on either side. Beautiful, they all look lined up. <laughs> Now I'm gonna need a pin and an E-clip. 
Well, my friends, after all is said and done, here is the base of the excavator. Check it out, putting the tracks on, I had to do off camera just because it was a pin and an e-clip as you can see right there, I needed both hands. Uh, but definitely has lots of room and movement in case a rock gets caught in there, it doesn't have to worry about breaking the track. I don't see the tracks being alloy, I don't think they are, they definitely uh, look... Are those tracks on the right way? Yeah, those are rolling the right way. They definitely look like they're aluminum. Uh, they don't look like they're gonna snap anytime soon. Look at this, look how heavy, listen. Huge, are you kidding me? I am insanely happy I am building a Cabelco. Guys, smash that like button right now. Leave me a comment. What do you think? Are you excited about the excavator build as much as I am? Guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Now get outside and have fun with RC. Or if you're like me right now, stay inside and build one. Bye, guys.